Well, I'm excited to be joined by author and researcher Hugh Newman uh, today. Hugh has written several books, such as Stone Circles, uh, Megalithic Studies in Stones, and Giants on Record, among others. Uh, he is CEO of Megalithomania, where he hosts uh, various conferences and tours and produces really countless videos regarding ancient megalithic sites on the Megalithomania YouTube channel. So make sure and subscribe there. Hugh, thanks so much uh, for joining me today. Yes, thanks for having me on, D. I appreciate it. It seems like you have been uh, traveling all over uh, last year and even into the new year. Uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, travels and where you've been. And then I want to jump into asking you about the Olmec culture. Sure thing. Well, currently we're, you know, we're doing some traveling in Mexico. Um, we're currently up in the Yucatan. We've been through Mexico City, been to Baja, California, because I was investigating giant accounts out there. We, um, all through Olmec land, uh, Puebla, um, Tabasco, Palenque, all these kind of areas, even down to the Guatemala border to see um, Calac Mull and the Rio Beck sites. So we've kind of been busy for the last few months doing that because we you know, wanted to get away from lockdown in Britain, which has got worse and worse, to be honest with you. Yeah, we try, we try and explore as much as we can. It's just a passion, an obsession to kind of go and see these sites. There's so many as well um, everywhere that we just kind of can't help ourselves. Yeah, well, I've really been enjoying your uh, recent video series regarding the history of the Olmecs. And I mean, whether it's the colossal statue heads that have been unearthed to all the strange artifacts you've been showing in the museums, um, to some of the strange features they seem to possess, the more I learn about the Olmec culture, uh, really the more fascinated I become. And so uh, from all the research you've been doing recently about the Olmecs, can you kind of give our audience a brief synopsis of when the Olmec might have arrived on the Gulf Coast of Mexico and, and what were the things that characterized their civilization? Yeah, they, there's, there's dating that goes back to 1800 BC, 1800 BC. That's the oldest dating they've got of Olmec uh, presence on the Gulf Coast area. This is all around Veracruz going into Tabasco. So centered really around Coastal Cocos. If you look on a map, that's kind of where the river comes in. And there's real evidence of construction taking place from at least 1400 BC. The earliest dating they've got in that area is uh, San Lorenzo, which is a major, was a major first Olmec capital. That's um, not too far from Ecuacan, uh, which is a town in the area. Um, and it kind of developed from there. There was different phases over a few hundred years that moved to Leventa. The capital moved to Leventa, which is another major Olmec site, which you can actually still visit. That's one of the ones you can still visit. And then eventually Tresapotes, but there were other sites, smaller sites all around the area. One of these was Laguna de los Cerros, which I discovered the location of when I was here last uh, two years ago. Uh, this year we went back there again. Um, I managed to get some aerial photography and film of it because although it's just mounds and earthworks, it's all that's left. The shape of them you can see from the air. And it's really specific um, kind of geometry orientation and landscape kind of engineering that many of these Olmec sites possess, but no one really knows about this because everyone goes to the big Mayan sites or they go to Teotihuacan and Mexico City because they're impressive. Whereas the Olmec sites, there's not much left uh, and you have to be an obsessive uh, researcher like me to kind of go there constantly. I've been to these sites several times now, all of them. We've been to pretty much every Olmec, known Olmec site there is. Uh, there's some south of Mexico City now because it's now thought that they diffused away from the Gulf Coast, headed southwards in different directions. One of the areas they settled was Morales and Guerrero State. They're just south of Mexico City. And also into Puebla as well, near Cholula, the Great Pyramid of Cholula. Um, but there's very interesting artifacts and, and sites below south of Mexico City that myself, I've been visiting them for years, for a decade pretty much. And I know Marco Figato is a fellow research. We met up with him and we looked at a couple of sites I hadn't been to. Uh, one of them was called Chimalacatlan. And there's um, another one in Guerrero, which is, I can't even pronounce it. It's such a long name, which you, we couldn't get to because it's so dangerous down there. Um, and there's little kidnappings going on. I didn't really want to take um, JJ and other people there. Um, 
get into any situation. But yeah, for the Olmecs, really, they're characterized by the megalithic stone heads, precision engineered stonework with 3D relief carvings and, and representations of the jaguar, and different animals and um, very unusual features that appear to be non kind of native Mexican, Native American in this area, which has caused much controversy because they look like almost like African or Samoan or something like this. There's other statues that look like they've got beards with long noses, with almost European or Caucasian. So it's caused a lot of controversy about who these people really were. Yeah, the, the statue heads are just like, I think you said the largest one's 40 tons. And all of them are basically wearing these helmets. Tell us a little bit about the helmets. And then you also mentioned that the Olmec might have used magnetism in, in their building. Uh, could that help explain how they might have carved the heads or some of their structures? Yeah, the, the 17 of these major colossal Olmec heads have been found. They range from about 18 tons up to 40 tons. Most of them, 10 of them are on display. Uh, sorry, 10 of them were found at San Lorenzo. Many of those are on display at the museum in Jalapa, which is currently open. That's up in Veracruz. There's, there's two on display in the National Museum in Mexico City. There's one at San Lorenzo site. There's more at um, <coughs> La Venta Park in Villa Hermosa, which is currently closed, I think. We, we went there a few weeks ago and it was closed. But we've been there several times already. And there's a there's one in the Carlos Pelican Museum in Villa Hermosa, which um, is well worth visiting. That's open. We fortunately turned up on the day it reopened. It was perfect timing. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there, which is mind blowing. But they, yeah, they all the, the heads appear to be wearing either the helmets or their kind of cloth or leather caps kind of thing. Some I've been just in discussions about this actually on YouTube. On, one of the recent videos with people and they say actually it looks like it's almost like polynesian hairstyles with certain things placed within the hair because you find braids down the back like um, plaits down the back as well which is also a western african tradition from a certain era um so but when i was in colombia back in 2011 i was in the bogota gold museum and i saw this gold olmec looking helmet on display i was like whoa this was like 2000 years old and I thought, my God, that just looks like one of the Olmec helmets. So they could have been gold. They, no one really knows anything. There's no, there's no writing. There's no good legends or stories that come down describing what they were doing. There's vague kind of stories and traditions, but that's about it. So we don't really know what they were. All we've got left is the stone heads to look at and decipher. Oh, and you asked about magnetism as well. Yeah, one of the things about the heads is that often at the temple area, this area here, um, some of the heads, and you get this in the ones in southern Guatemala as well, there's some Olmec style heads, which are a bit later, down at Cycle Monte Alto, and also La Democracia. Um, and they've got, in the temples here, and sometimes in the belly button as well, they've got like a magnetic orientation, so, mag so your compass will go crazy at these particular spots. And it's now thought that not only did they, they must have understood magnetism to choose these spots when they were carving the stone, but at San Lorenzo, they found like um, a lodestone compass, which could have been used to orientate the sites. And it's, it, all, it goes to magnetic north rather than, rather than true north. And so this magnet they found would have been, and it kind of goes slightly off north. And most of their sites were aligned in the same way slightly off north, like seven or eight degrees off north. You see that clearly at Leventa, for instance, if you look at the maps. And so they, they were using this to orient, but they were also using magnetism. I think they understood it so well that they were using it to enhance and alter consciousness. And they may have been using it even to levitate stones. I know this sounds crazy, but if you can oppose magnets, you can you know get things to float. And so the fact that they were moving these up to 40 ton blocks up to 60 kilometers across swamps, rivers, and mountains may give a clue as to how they could have done it. Well, this has been a fascinating interview, uh, Hugh. Thanks so much for uh, your time today. And for those uh, listening or watching, make sure and follow Hugh. He's on Instagram uh, at Hugh Newman one, I believe we just posted a, uh, 
a couple of his photos from Mexico. There's an incredible picture of him standing in front of a massive lost pyramid. Do you call it Temochan? Is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah, Temo, yeah interestingly, Temochan is like um, the, the site is called Chimalacatlan. That's the official name. But the site, myself and Marco Bagata and a couple of authors from the 1800s believe it's Temochan. Temochan in certain dialect of Maya means um, the land of the bird serpent so this is like plume serpent and that's the origin point of all these cultures before the Olmecs there's a, there's a theory that the Olmecs may have emerged near Chimalata land down in Morelis and emerged out from there and this may be that site this origin site it's in all the early Mexican traditions we're going to write about it in our, our book eventually I think you know and we explain it as best we can in the video but it's very very interesting yeah 